when I'm talking to women in particular, but everyone about risk taking, right? Because I talk about risk taking a lot. And the first thing I do is start with why. What's the passion? What's the love behind it, right? Because we don't take leaps of faith. We don't take big risks because fear stops us, right? That, you know, that's what stops us from doing that. But love conquers fear any day of the week. So if we really connect with our why and what we love, then there's so much power behind that that fuels our ability to take risks. This episode is about discovering your power and adapting and shifting to continue then aligning that with your vision. Oh, my guest, Karen Ann Bullock, author of Discovering Power, is here with me. And it, it's all about being in your authentic self and really listening to the power within us and bringing that forward and standing in your courage and it's an incredible book. Karen, welcome to the show. Let's let's get into it. Discovering, that's a little bit brief, like where you came from, the book, and, and why you wrote the book. Well, uh, more, thank you for having me today. I am excited to be here and no giving away the book now. No, no giving away secrets. I know you. <laughs> um, anyway, I left my corporate career. I guess it's been close to five years ago now because I, I took a little hiatus shortly after that to spend time with my parents in the last years of their lives, which just was such a blessing. Um, and, and when I left corporate, one of the reasons I left was in order to be able to write a book because I was an English major. And of course, you know, the great American novel, all that, all that yada, yada, yada. But anyway, what I really decided to do was write a leadership book <clears throat> and I started writing it. Um, and <laughs> frankly, it was horrible. It was absolutely horrible. I, it was boring me to tears. So I kind of put it to the side and said, okay, yeah, this isn't working out. So one day I went for a walk and I heard this story start to form in my head, the story about Cheryl. In fact, what I heard on my walk eventually became the prologue of the book. And so I ended up writing a novel instead of a leadership book. Obviously, it's still about leadership. And it's about, um, I guess, a vision, a possible vision for leadership. And I wanted to really dive into the challenges that many leaders face today, Ironically, the timing of it is pretty amazing since the book does start with a lot of layoffs. And I know that's going on a lot in the world today, which is really sad, but, um, you know, it's timing. So it, it, part of the book is, is how to address that as a leader and the struggles that, you know, people think that often think, well, you know, the decisions are made and at the top and management doesn't struggle with them. And, and I think this book shows how much... Cheryl does struggle with them and she's not sure what to do. And so that's kind of at least the dilemmas at the beginning of the book. I want to talk about the, I love all of this. I love all of this, that, that the vision from a child and the vision of college, like you wanted to write an amazing, juicy, juicy book, right? Mm -hmm. And that voice, and then you were in corporate America, very high up in corporate America, CEO suite, all of that, and and that doesn't that those are two different directions up until now, and that I want to talk about the word courage, that the taking to listening to that voice and saying no, I'm scrapping the traditional leisure, which, which would have done well, right? Because you have so much that knowledge and expertise, but it wasn't about that. It was the courage to say, I get to tell the story of Cheryl and, and I get to stand in as a international bestseller, bringing a story forward, which is truly was your vision and is your vision. Tell, lead into that if there was resistance right and then oh of course of course of course there was resistance of course there was resistance and 
You know, I'm all about risk taking. I I am a risk taking coach. I talk about risk taking all the time and I love it. And I have been a risk taker, although in unconventional ways, well, some conventional ways, but mostly in unconventional ways have I been a risk taker. But to your point, you know, most leadership books, most books that people write as far as their coaching practice and things like that are more traditional in the how to, the the self-help, the, you know, the guidebook kind of thing. And I have 30 years of of experience in corporate life, many of those in leadership roles. And I know that there's many, many different ways of doing leadership, right? And we don't always have as leaders all the answers. I think that's one of the mistakes that a lot of leaders make is they think they have to have all the answers and we don't. So when I started writing it fiction, one of the things that I loved about writing this as a story, to your point, having the courage to bring in, like bringing it out as a story, is the ability to really dive into people's emotions and different people's emotions, different people's perspectives on things, and give, I guess, a vision of different types of leadership, um, different ways to approach leadership, and, and potentially... I'm not going to say that this is a a guidebook to how to do leadership because it's not, but what it is for me or my hope for it is it to be an inspiration for helping people figure out how to do their leadership with courage, with integrity, um, and to really wrestle with some of those deep emotions that, that we get. Um, I mean, leaders are not devoid of emotion, contrary to popular belief. Well, that so actually, I think more powerful leaders are as they are standing in their emotions because they get to see it in others and bring them forward. So, on that note, and I love the word inspiration because the book is inspiration. And it's fun. The when it comes to women out there, and it comes to people out there, and it, they're they're saying, "I have a vision." To take the leap, what would you say to them that you two have that whatever it is, whatever it is you get to bring forward and yet you get to do this too and, and standing in that courage and, and not taking the safe route? Lean into that. Well, I always start with why. <laughs> when I'm talking to when I'm talking to women in particular, but everyone about risk taking, right? Because I talk about risk taking a lot. And the first thing I do is start with why. What's the passion? What's the love behind it? Right? Because we don't take leaps of faith. We don't take big risks because fear stops us, right? That, you know, that's what stops us from doing that. But love conquers fear any day of the week. So if we really connect with our why and what we love, then there's so much power behind that that fuels our ability to take risks. Now, the other thing I always tell people is we don't have to take risks, all the risks at once, right? You can, I didn't leave my corporate job at the drop of a hat, right? I prepared for it. I, I planned for it. It was probably five years between when I said, hmm, I think I, I think I want to leave and and when I actually did and, and there was prep time. So it's not like you have to take a leap of faith. You don't have to jump off the cliff. You can plan for it and have a parachute when you jump off the cliff anyway. <laughs> but um, but the why is is really for me, the first, the starting place. And so I love books. I love fiction. I love stories. I love to inspire people. um, And I love to dive into people's why. I love to dive into what makes people tick. And so fiction was sort of a natural outcoming of all of that for me. Okay. So the book, the process, biggest biggest obstacle and how did you get over it? The biggest obstacle was probably my own lack of preparedness, if you want to call it that. I, you know, when I wrote first wrote the book, I had re- I've read a lot of fiction, but I had never written fiction before. I had a really good story. I love the story. Um, I could tell it fairly well, but it really, I really needed to go through a learning process 
before it, the book could be everything that it could be, right? That, that I could bring really all of my skills and talents and new ones to telling the story in a way that it was compelling and fun to read and engaging. And so what I found out is I have some natural superpowers as a writer, writing, uh, writing, writing dialogue is one of them. I'm very good at writing dialogue, but there were other pieces around that, that I had to learn. So <clears throat> how I overcame it was basically to get help. I mean, to, to, to ask for people to help me, to teach me the things that I didn't know. And, you know, that's another thing about risk-taking. We, we, we can ask for help. We can, ask for support, we can hire people to help us do the things that we need to do. And, and that's what I did. So to, to overcome the biggest obstacle to not only publishing the book, but to really make it something that I was, you know, really proud of and, and really happy to put out in the world and really felt good about offering to people. And, and I, 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 I love that. So again, asking for support, leaning in to be humble that you don't have all the answers and, and, and getting out from people that do, right? Absolutely. So now on the other side, because um, today's a celebration, right? Book just launched international bestseller. And what are you feeling today? What does it feel like? Well, I'm feeling excited about it. I'm I honestly am so grateful to every to all the support that I got yesterday with the book. I, people reached out to help to offer to help that I never expected. Um, people that I did ask to help were so gracious and so generous, and and I'm just I'm really just full of gratitude today more than more than anything else. I I'm just. I'm just amazed at how many people really stepped up to help me. And I feel really, I feel really good about it. And, and that's really what I'm feeling. Um, and then I, I shared a little video on social media this morning, but you know, the, the best part of yesterday was late last night. I was actually getting ready to shut down my computer and go to bed. And somebody reached out to me who had read the book and she'd already finished it. <laughs> She, yeah, she read it all in one day and she was so, she, she told me how much she resonated with it and, and how much it really reaffirmed what she was doing with her life. And, and that was just, you know, that was just so special because I mean, bestseller is great. It's nice, but I want people to read the book and I want people to be touched by it and to, to have somebody reach out to me so quickly who had just devoured the book and was touched by it you know that meant the world to me All right, the book okay give us a quick the 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 book what's it about who's their heroine not to give it away and who's the book for well the intention of the book was for women executives because the heroine is a female executive and she goes through i'll call it a crisis of conscience trying to figure out, okay, things are going wacky in this corporate environment. And <clears throat> how can I stand in my integrity? How can I feel good about myself and still do my job? Right. I mean, pretty basic stuff like that is where she, where she was. And I know there's a lot of women and men in corporate life that will be able to relate to what's going on. But the cool thing is about it is people that have read it that are outside of corporate life that the struggles in some ways are universal, right? They're the struggles of who I am and who do I want to be and when is it important for me to stand up for things and when is it not? Those are those are things we all struggle with. So I guess in a nutshell, it's really about a female executive who is trying to, to determine how to be the best leader she can be and whether that's going to work in her, in her current corporate environment. Loving that. And okay, you, because you're also, people can work with you, right? So what does that look like to work with you and how can people get in touch with you? And um, 
Is there a free gift? Or what is all of that? Unpack that for us. Well, um, yes, I am a coach. So I do take on private clients, few, not too many, but I take on a few private clients I work with to go through the process of helping them overcome their fears and get clarity on their vision and really get connected and trust themselves so that they can take the risks they need to make the impact in the world that they really are here to make and that want to make. So I, I, I work with private clients. I also have a group program. Probably the next one is going to be in the fall and there will be some other events that are going to be going on both uh, some free events around the book and other things that are going to be happening in the next month or two. So the best thing for people to do is to uh, connect with me on LinkedIn, Karen Ann Bullock. That's the easiest way to get in touch with me. Or if you go to ascendingladders.com, Ascending Ladders is the name of the series because you know this book is the first of a trilogy, I was, right? I was, I was keeping a touch on that because I've been already called out for giving it away because I love the book so much that... Oh, can I say it? Yes, it's going to be All a trilogy. Right, I, 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 get, I get to say, it's a trilogy. Yes. Okay. I've been waiting, but all right. Okay. So it's a trilogy. It's called the Ascending Ladders series. And if you go to ascendingladders.com, you can A, find links to buy the book if you haven't already gotten your copy of it. And B, you can sign up to be on my newsletter for the series and the book and get all the updates on all the activities and events that are around this book and when the next book is coming out and the one after that. So there'll be lots of goodies. Um, so if you go to ascendingladders.com, buy the book and then come back and sign up for, for being on the mailing list and get all the juicy details. Because you know, as soon as you finish the first, you're going to be waiting for the second. So get on the list because yeah, it's that good. All right, everyone. Karen Ann Bullock, Discovering Power. Get the book, ascendingladders.com. And yeah, go stand in your power and discover your legacy and vision that's within you as well. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for having me, Maureen. I always love our conversations. So we're going to do something a little different today. So, and, and if it's just not, um, we, in, in, in the universe, we, we lost a light of a significant, powerful, courageous, loving, joyful energy. So this tribute, this show is tributed to Tina Turner. Mm -hmm. And as Tina, she overcame a, a physical abuse from the ones most closest to her. And, and was powerful, never not saying powerful. However, she could have taken that power and stayed angry and hateful and, and victim and standing in that. And you know what? Her power and her energy, that talented woman would have stayed. But where her true genius, her gift, her goddessness came from was from shifting to her power of joy, love, and light. And so within that, this show is for you, Tina. And my absolute can never, ever not jump on that dance floor. Proud Mary. Here you go, Tina. Love you. Miss you. And again, thank we'll you. We'll keep on trying.